York has no shortage of small villages. One village has a charming, albeit small, main street called Love Lane. There's a candy store, cheese shop, market, and of course, a deli. It's just a New York thing, don't like delis and bagels. Greg Amarati is owner of Amarati's of Love Lane, a small town luncheonette in the village of Mattituck, where everything is made in-house. We make everything, a lot of egg sandwiches, a lot of stuff with chicken and bacon. Locals love Chewy's Chili. I'm working six and a half years here. I love, I love how work here, I love the customers. Amarati grew up on the North Fork and has nothing but praise for the area. There's great shops, great restaurants, the wineries have been huge. Now you're starting to see breweries and things like that. North Fork Brewing uses as many local ingredients as possible. There's a lot of really untapped ingredients that not every brewer is going to use on a daily basis that we're able to pick up locally from farms. Combine the local ingredients with co-owner Ian Van Borgendien's chemistry background and the team creates some really cool brews. We just wrapped up a papaya guava IPA, so a real tropical, fruity, refreshing beer from the Butternut the Hut, which I'm proud of as well because it gets to use a lot of the local produce. Co-owner Peter Barode says there are usually 12 beers on tap at their Riverhead Tap Room, located in a circa 1935 firehouse. For those who aren't beer lovers, they have another option. Ian and I rotate around seasonally and find some of our favorite wines and bring them in from the local vineyards. The local vineyards, part of a wine explosion on the east end of Long Island, drawing thousands of visitors a year. Vineyards including Lieb Cellars. We have 14 acres of Pinot Blanc planted, which to our knowledge, at least to our winemaker's knowledge, is the largest contiguous plot of Pinot Blanc planted in the U.S. According to Appalachian America, there are 44 wineries on the North Fork alone. Lieb Cellars general manager and North Fork native Amy Opiso says the region is perfect for growing grapes. There are excellent growing conditions here and mainly the reason for that is our soil. So because of some glacier activity in this area, we have mostly loam soils, which is a combination of sand, silt and clay. And those soils do very well with drainage. Then there's the geography. Three bodies of water surround the peninsula, regulating the climate. There are two labels here, Lieb Cellars and Bridge Lane Wine. Lieb Cellars is our primary label and it is our estate label. So that means that the grapes that we pick that are going into the Lieb wines are only grapes that we grow on our farm. The reason we created the Bridge Lane second label is because we weren't always using all of those grapes every year. And we thought, okay, let's create this second label that can be a little bit more casual. Bridge Lane wine comes not just in bottles, but in cans, boxes, even kegs. We recognize the fact that if we were going to be putting these wines in alternative packaging, we were taking the risk that they would be perceived as low quality. So we said, okay, if we're going to do that, we need to make sure that the wine is really good and that we would be putting the same wine that we put into a bottle of Bridge Lane. In keeping with the North Fork's commitment to sustainability, Lieb is part of Long Island sustainable wine growing. The only third party sustainable wine growing organization on the East Coast. It tells you exactly what type of sprays you can use, how much of that spray you can use. It's a whole host of things that you need to do that require more investment in the vineyard. But for us at Lieb, we just felt it was kind of a no brainer. Down the road, another winery won't hesitate to say their favorite color is pink. So we are at Croto Vineyards. This is a rosé only vineyard. It's the only vineyard in the United States that's dedicated exclusively to just producing rosé wines. Amanda Frankel is the general manager. The vines were planted in 2003 with the intention of just making rosé wine. At that point, I think rosé hadn't really hit its stride the way that it has now. It's really picked up and become more of like a cultural phenomenon. We have several different varieties that we produce. There's Cabernet Franc planted, Merlot, a few different clones, and uh, Sauvignon Blanc. With its two historic barns and charming grounds, guests at Cruteau feel like they're in the south of France. 
Frankel says the vineyard makes six still wines and three sparkling. Get it while it lasts. Once they're out, it's gone for the season. Rosé is meant to be consumed young, right when it's bottled, so we like to produce a fresh vintage, have that sell out, and then produce next year. We'll open up in March with the newest vintage, and then that will take us typically anywhere between August and November. No matter where you go on the North Fork, a glass of wine is always nearby. It's absolutely gorgeous farmland out here. So many vineyards and it's really cool to see because you're driving around and you, you don't really know where you are. You don't feel like you're in Long Island. The winery had to shut down for a short period of time in mm -hmm. 2020 because of the pandemic, but they had a very busy uh, summer and fall last year. In fact, there was quite an influx of people to the East End at the height of the pandemic. Yeah, many New Yorkers actually escaped from the city mm. and they came and they wanted to be, have fresh air in the country. And a lot of the business owners appreciated the uptick in all the additional people. But then there were others who did not embrace the traffic and the crowds quite as much. Still to come, there's more to the fairy story.